Hey there everybody, welcome big boy. So for the world exclusive shrink rippage of a game that we have all been waiting for for a long time and I in particular have been giving Lock and Load Publishing a very hard time. They were so kind as to send me the first copy and let's have a look shall we, and see if it's all that we expect it to be. So first things first, different uh, cover art than you might have expected. So you can see that it's all rather uh, awesome, I think. On the back, you've got some counter art. I know it's a bit hard to see, sorry, there you go, guys. And uh, a little Japanese soldier there. And this tells you that it's a premier supporter edition which will have uh, some goodies in it. Let's see what, what that is. And there should also be some bonuses in here for those that pre-ordered and paid uh, all that time ago for the, uh, for the game uh, as a thank you and an apology for being so late. All right. You'll notice that uh, the box is the typical lock and load standard box, they're really nice quality, white on the inside, which is always nice instead of the bare, bare cardboard. Okay. Oh, there's a nice letter here that explains what's going on with everything. And uh, there's the team signing. Uh, do I need to read all this to you? I will... Uh, I will have a look at this and, and we'll discuss it later in the video if I can append something to it. So let's do that. Uh, certificate of Authenticity. Copy number two of 375. Well, there you go. Should have left it in shrink, eh? <laughs> All right, rule book. Full color rule book, manual 4.0. Uh, they're gonna split the rule series books into two uh, streams, one for World War II and one for Modern. And so this will deal with all the rules that are specific to World War II. There will be no helicopters in this, there will be no uh, thermal imaging and all that sort of stuff. You can see the rules. And I, I haven't had a chance to, I've read a draft of these, the rewrite. Uh, I think there's, there's been some really nice work done on cleaning up a lot of the ambiguities in here. I'm not going to tell you it's perfect because I don't know for a fact. But the, the artwork and the layout and the format and hopefully the corrections are uh, exceptional. So, you know, this, this then pads the rules out though. Uh, you know, if you probably take all of the, well, there's an index, uh, there's a glossary in the back as well. That's nice, I haven't seen that before. Uh, placement, so it ends up in placements, caves, fortifications, etc. It's got vehicle rules in here as well, and it's got uh, the F4 Wildcats, other types of aircraft in it. Uh, this does tag it out to a uh, honkin' 53 page rule book, but if you look at the artwork, you can see that there's probably 10 or 15 pages of artwork there that make it larger. Example of play and scenarios, okay. I, mean, I kind of like this guy. He looks a little nervous. Uh, Example of play in here. Really nice artwork on this as well. And layout, good formatting. Nice big font too. And it's very easy to read font as well, I like it. So this is an extensive 11, 12 page example of play. Glossary. Again, this is uh, uh, more specific to, let me just check to see if that's the same as back here. Yes, it is. It's the same as the rule book. Okay, then I guess we go over to this, the scenarios. Oh, wow. Okay, I like this layout. This is cool. Okay, Guadalcanal, two scenarios for it. So you've got your troop set up, background, this nice sort of parchment paper look, and then the map layout. Do you see that? Okay, you probably can't see that. There you go. Barofuraki. Heroes of North Africa, which is a name change for the for the uh, Italian and Africa-based 
uh, lock and load module that's coming out. There's a whole bunch of changes coming, some of which I understand and have been told about, but most of which I think I will just wait until they're all announced. And it's all very, very exciting stuff. Suffice to say that by the year end, you will have more than you know what to do with in terms of opportunities to purchase lock and load uh, products. Okay, so there's all scenarios, right? There we go. These are all currently available now as well. Uh, you may have seen this was a uh, fan-made document and they've now paid the chap who made these and I'm sorry I forget his name and it's not on here. Um, you've got the sequence of play on the back on, the, on this side and how to do some things and then this is a great little cheat sheet. You can basically play the game with this. That's all you really need in terms of charts and the terrain chart. Okay, uh, skill cards, skill reference cards, skill card references, turn track. All right, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, player aid card. Actually put the uh, terrain in alphabetical order, that's nice. Uh, those that have played a lot of lock and load will know that that was usually not the case in the past. Um, and then you've got uh, all the special fortifications and other bits and pieces that, uh, that pop up in the game, they're described as well, and their impact on the game. DFT and OFT modifications, okay, now. Here's where the game gets a little different. Well, let's have a look at the counters first. There are, looks like there's three sheets of counters and some of them are about to pop out. Gotta be careful here. So the Japanese counters, maybe you can, I don't know if you can see these, I'm trying to, I guess I've got this light shining right in the, uh, in the way there. Sorry guys, I'll give you a little bit of a close up on them all. I'd say these are these are these might be just a little, registered a little close on on just those one two three there you know but all these are fine these are fine but those ones there are a little to the side everything else looks almost perfect these are uh, easy punch pre clipped I like the artwork for the uh, for the uh, the cards that are used in the game a bunch of vehicles down here okay let's no I dropped it. Let's put uh, this guy down. You've got your leaders. And your uh, Marines and uh, regular army. And then vehicles here. These are all really nicely done as well. The red boxes uh, denote uh, the ability to assault move. Black boxes, these are heroes here. Black boxes show that he can uh, extend his range. And here are the information counters. Got some module specific in tunnel bonsai counters. Smoke, mines, caves, aircraft, wrecks, LTVs. And then you've got the backs as well. And I'm sorry if the glare is uh, bad. The spider holes. All right. Now, there's two sets of maps in here, and uh, the second set of maps is for the well, the folks that, uh, um, well, I think it's for all the folks that had to wait, or is it, let me see. Yes, bonus maps. One of the bonus maps, that, and you'll see that in a second. These are the bonus maps for everyone who had to wait for a while. So here's your standard map. Three, four, five maps. A little beach landing, probably for Guadalcanal. And here are the X maps. And these are the same maps. Let's see if we can do this. Uh, I'll show you. But the. Hello. That's the bidding, it's the last one. I hear it is. Same maps but they're printed with larger hexes. And you can see, although they're larger hexes, 
it's not taken up an enormous amount of room. It's still got... Uh... So, let's put one on, let's put this guy on top. We'll give you a feel for the, the increase in size. It's not outrageously bigger, it's just bigger. And each hex is large enough that you can put probably two hex, two units in it. So I, uh, I really, I've had these uh, for Forgotten Heroes for a while, and I really like playing with the larger maps. It gives it a different sense of uh, scale and perspective without being, you know, a giant map like Heroes of the Gap or something like that. Uh, you know, putting a couple of maps together is, looks real cool as well. They're beautifully done. And there you have it. So, suffice to say, there's only, there's, you know, one observation and that everyone's going to say, oh, well, hang on, um, there are no, uh, why aren't they doing mounted maps? I think that's just a a choice by the company because they want to be in control of their destiny and have a, a better reign on production quality and availability of product. And I think that's one of the ways that they can manage that is by moving moving the games, the lock and load games to uh, paper maps. And frankly, I don't mind. I've, uh, I've now managed to acquire most of the games uh, uh, the maps for most of the games with paper maps, and they're all uh, they're all lovely, very very nice. You know, I like these bigger these bigger hexes. Look at that bad boy. And I, and in fact, if these come if the games come with these with the larger hexes, that'd be awesome. I don't mind either way, but I will certainly be buying uh, buying the upgraded maps, the larger maps, if they are not a uh, included in each game. But I think they look awesome. Great, uh, great detail, great shading, brings the maps, really brings them to life. Gets you out of that pokey little ASL scale where you're shoving things around. Now we've got a little bit of room to move and maneuver and it changes the feel of the game significantly. It adds, in a, in a, in a uh, very subtle way, it adds a level of narrative to it because there's this sense of space around you as you're, when you're moving your counters. All right, that's it. So that's a, that's a, a quick tr shrink rip of the game and uh, I will be jumping in very deeply to this uh, over the next few weeks even though I may have some trouble coming up I'll work out how we do this later.